This is a lesson from our Making a Graphic Novel course. To get the full course, go to bloopanimation.com slash making a graphic novel. So we finished our inking and we've scanned them into our Photoshop page template, but we're not done yet. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to apply screen tones to our page to give it some tonal values. I've made a copy of our file for doing tones. So the first thing I can do is take the two layers that have the two pages on them and merge them together so that we have just a single layer of our inks. We're going to end up with a lot of layers in this file, so the fewer we start out with, the better. Next, we're going to be putting the screen tones behind our line work, but since these pages were scanned in, we need to get rid of the white of the paper so that our other layers can show through. The easiest way to do that is to just set the layer's blend mode to multiply. This makes the lighter values of the layer transparent. Now if we make another layer underneath, Anything we put there will show through. So now we need to actually find the screen tones that we're going to use. If you search online for screen tone patterns, you can find all kinds of sources. One of my favorite sources is this DeviantArt page just called Screen Tones by Jen and Psychobob. As you can see, there are a bunch of screen tones of images and crazy patterns but I just want the basic tones packs that are in this folder. Make sure that whatever screen tones you get are high resolution for print. So I just got the basic dots and screens, and when you download that and unpack it, you'll see that it comes as a series of these tiny GIF files. That's because these images are meant to be tiled in Photoshop to create the dot pattern of the screen tone. Now we don't actually need to use the GIF files because they've also included this PAT file. This is a palette of patterns that already includes all these different sizes of dots. So let's see how we use that. In Photoshop, we need to just select a tool that will use the patterns, like the fill bucket. Then up top we change this setting from foreground to pattern, so that means it's going to fill with a pattern instead of a color. Then on the pattern drop down menu, we just need to go to the corner menu and go to load patterns. And then we just find that PAT file and it'll load in all of those different screen tone patterns. Now there are a couple different ways you can use these patterns. What I like to do is just fill the whole layer with the pattern. Then add a layer mask to the layer and fill that all in with black. Then I'm going to get the paintbrush, change it to white, make sure it has a hard edge, and then I'm going to paint on the layer mask, revealing the screen tone underneath. You can also use the lasso tool to select an area, and then use the fill command to fill it with white. By the way, the keyboard shortcut for that fill command is Shift F5. I'm going to be using that a lot in this lesson. I can also go back in with a black brush and kind of scrape away some of the screen tone to create highlights and soften edges. With physical screen tones, artists used to use an X-Acto knife to scratch away at the tone in this same way. Now a nice thing about working with a filled layer and a layer mask like this is that if I want to change that value for her hair, I can just reselect everything in the layer and fill it with a different pattern. I don't have to worry about redefining the shape for her hair. There's also a slightly different way to do this that makes it even easier to change the patterns. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to give it a layer mask. Then I'm going to fill the whole layer with black. Then I'm going to fill the whole layer mask with black as well. So now nothing is showing. Now I'm going to use a brush on the layer mask to carve out the area of her shirt. And you can see the black is showing through now. Then if I double click on the layer itself, it brings up the layer styles dialog box. And then out here I have an option for pattern overlay. What this does is fill all the opaque areas of that layer with a pattern. So here you can see I can choose from my drop-down list of patterns 
and I can see in real time how it gets updated. So that's the way I like to work because it makes it easier to make changes. Now another nice thing about working with layer masks like this is that it means anywhere on the page where I want to reuse that same screen tone, I just have to carve it out on the layer mask. To help keep my layers straight, I'm going to name them after what they're meant to be used for, and I'm also going to note the name of the pattern that's used for that layer. So the tone on this layer is what I'm going to end up using for her hair everywhere on both pages. Now so far these have both been pattern based tones that just give you an even pattern of dots. But let's say we wanted to use one of those fancy image tones, like this one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that image file and drag it onto the canvas. It creates a new layer and it imports it as a smart object. Now unlike the earlier lesson where we placed the images of our inks into this template using the file place linked command, this smart object is not linked to that original file because I just clicked and dragged to get it in here. This is an embedded smart object, meaning that it's imported all the data of the original file into this Photoshop document. Now be aware that the screen tones of images like this that you download are going to be fairly high resolution and large. So if you import a lot of images this way, your file size is going to go up really fast. If you find Photoshop getting sluggish, you might need to rasterize some layers as you go, but I'm going to wait and rasterize everything at the end. To use this image, we just need to position it where we want it, then I'll add a layer mask, and then I'm going to make a selection of this panel. Then I'm going to go to select invert to select everything outside the panel and fill that with black. Then I just need to carve out Jackie on the mask so the screen tone is only behind her. And there we go. And then I also found this special cool gradient screen tone that I'm going to use for the pattern of her denim jacket. I do this the same way by dragging it in, adding a layer mask, and then carving out the area where I want it to show through. And then if I click this link icon to unlink the layer mask from the layer, I can select the layer and then drag around my gradient to position it just right so that the exact portion of the screen tone shows through that I want. You can also scratch out a little bit of highlights to give it more of a worn denim look. And that's basically it. Finishing the rest of the page is just a matter of repeating those techniques. And there we go. Now I'm going to save a copy of this document in the finals folder. And then I'm going to open up that copy. And what we're going to do now is reduce down the size of our document by eliminating unnecessary layer information. Now we could right click on a layer and choose either rasterize layer style or just rasterize layer depending if you have a layer style or not. And what that would do is apply the layer mask, making it permanent, and it would eliminate those large embedded smart objects and reduce them down to just the pixels that are visible. However, in our finished file, since it is our finished file, I can just select all the layers, right click, and choose Merge Layers. That will reduce everything down to a single layer, then I'm going to go up to Image, Mode, Grayscale. That will save us file size because it's going to eliminate all the information for the color channels, since we don't need those anyway. And actually, I probably should have changed it to grayscale from the beginning. Now, if we look at our actual files, 
we can see that this finished file is now about 10 megabytes, but our working tone file is over 600 megabytes. So that gives you some idea of the effect of having all those layers. If you want to keep your file from getting this large, you can rasterize individual layers as you go, like I showed you a minute ago. This course is truly a one-stop shop for learning everything you need to get started making your own graphic novel. So what are you waiting for? 